Uh, you mentioned the book quite a number of times that when you were brought into TNA, it was essentially they wanted Hulk Hogan and Hulk Hogan said, I will not go to TNA without you. And there's misnomers out there, uh, uh, funny ideas of what you did and didn't do in TNA. And in the book, Grateful, you say that you were essentially a fixer of bad creative for Hulk Hogan. <laughs> do you remember any of the creative... Uh, that Vince Russo or somebody else may have brought up for Hulk Hogan to do that you said, absolutely not? No, there really wasn't any, you know, because when it came to Hulk's story, I was usually involved right from the get-go, and Russo and and everybody else was pretty deferential. So there was never any, you know, harebrained ideas that I had looked at and went, oh, my gosh, are you people not, you know, that never happened. It it was actually a pretty smooth process in in the very beginning. Yeah, with Hulk Hogan, I always find that I think his, correct me if I'm wrong, his very last match on TNA was with Sting, and it was actually pretty good, even though he was hurting terribly and everything. It, all the emotion was there, and he just knew what to do at what time still. And I just find that he was a true worker can do that. Yeah, and a lot of credit has to go to Sting as well. S- Sting, it's a dance, and Sting really, really did everything he could to make that match look as good as it could. Hulk was heavily medicated. You know, he was in a lot of pain, but he, like his life was in that ring. That's where Hulk felt the most comfortable because he was in control. Once he stepped out of that ring, he had no control over his life, especially at that period of time. People were coming at him from a hundred different directions, going through the divorce and all the stuff that came with it. The issue that Hulk had with his son, Nick, and, and the pressure. Oh, yeah, that was another big thing mm-hmm. that kind of led to that point in time when Hulk, unfortunately, you know, said some things that made him look so bad. Um, his son was in jail. His, his 16 or 17-year-old son was in, iso- was in isolation in jail. That, that will break an adult, you know, and over time. But yet they had to keep Nick Hogan in in isolation. Normally, the way they punish prisoners is putting him in isolation. But they had to put Nick in isolation because he was so young, they were afraid to put him in the general population. You think that wouldn't weigh on a father on top of everything else? You know, um, but when, it, when Hulk was in the ring, that stuff was a distant thing. In that ring, he was in the moment. And in that moment, he was in control. And in that moment, he was Hulk Hogan, the character. And that's where Terry Bollea found the most comfort. Did he get it out of his system after that last match, do you think? Or was he maybe planning for more or his body wouldn't let him? Or where do you think? I, I think <clears throat> I think the desire to get back in the ring, the, the fantasy of it was still there. But the reality of it, he lived with that 24 hours a day and he knew that it was never going to happen. He wanted it to. And he dreamt about it and he talked about it. And he, you know, he, he almost lived it vicariously through his conversations. But if it came down to putting on the boots, he knew he couldn't do it. 